I'm Christina Fugis with the Mulvican Technology, <laughs> and I am with the president of Progressive Components, Glenn Starkey. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Christina. Did you like that intro? Yeah, yeah, you just nailed it. So. I came up with that. <laughs> All right, so why don't we start by just giving a little snapshot of what brought you to the plastics and mold making industry. You gotta give a little background. Uh, a broom uh, <laughs> and a snow shovel. Um, I, I'm a cradle mold guy. Uh, started out in the industry uh, uh, working at a mold shop, just cleaning machines, sweeping floors. Uh, I decided during high school I wanted to then pursue a, a, an apprentice uh, apprenticeship and uh, just got into the trade and like a lot of your viewers right. uh, just love the industry. So loved it from the beginning. It was really cool seeing how uh, raw steel, rough steel was being shaped, you know, into something then um, that's going to make, you know, lots of parts for lots of markets. It was really profound to see uh, what mold making was all about at an early age and said, that's that's what I want to do. I want to be a mold designer. So there you go. And here you are. Right? Yeah, how about it? With a great company. <laughs> oh, well. and, and a leading company that Instead of making an honest industry. living. Um, <laughs> you're a mold maker. I've, 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 I've tended to be a supplier to the mold making industry. <laughs> I still say that you're the mold maker at the heart of it. Of course, right? yeah. It's, All it's, right. So tell me, what inspires you about this industry? Because it really is a community. So what inspires you? Um, well, one thing is that it's, it's, you're never going to be done learning uh, being in this industry. I think by the nature of uh, plastic materials changing and then the needs for uh, the resulting tooling to be changing uh, and then just, you know, technologies of in-mold labeling and, you know, just, just molds have gotten more complex uh, over the decades and it just keeps uh, changing new materials, uh, new approaches of you know bimetallic uh, mm -hmm. and conformal cooling, etc. Yep. So I mean, one one could get into the trade in their teens and uh, go through the industry for the decades ahead and just never be done learning, never be done discovering. And so. I think that that needs to be said because there's a perception out there that that's quite the opposite, and it's not that way. I like to think too. I wish there was a different word we could even call a mold. It just doesn't seem like it's a, I mean, a, a mold is a machine in itself. It's yeah, And the more complexity more. of it and, and the wonders of it, quite frankly. But everything you said is so true to people that might be interested in a career in mold making. It's not going anywhere. And it's, it, it advances year to year. Yeah, advanced manufacturing yes. keeps growing, keeps, but, but out of the advanced manufacturing world, um, uh, well, we're preaching to the converted, but we're especially <laughs> partial towards uh, the, the mold uh, end of it, and uh, I think it's just uh, it's just going to keep growing, developing, and morphing, and uh, it's, it'll never be a dull moment being in this industry. That's true. So. All right, so let's bring it down to a couple key innovations of Progressive. So one, standardization has been what progresses. It's been your mission right. for about what more than thirty years at this point. Yeah, so yeah. why don't you run down a few a few of the key products? that you would recommend today for that offer a mold builder and a molder. Oh, I hope you got enough film in that camera. <laughs> they offer long running performance <laughs> and simplify maintenance, which are two really key benefits in the industry. So yes, run down a no, few of them. Sure. Not your whole litany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no worries, no worries. No, um, we've got a lot of stuff that we've built up <laughs> over the years, you know? Yep. And we're gonna have a lot more stuff. Uh, 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 I was a, I'll joke that I was a so-so a guy in the shop and I was an impatient mold designer. So for both aspects, I wanted things to be modular, plug and play, um, and that's what our mission you know, has been. How can we standardize uh, things that are custom made uh, and then saving the expertise of the mold maker for the cavity core work and not you know, for mundane parts that could be standardized. So, so yeah, uh, it, it depends on, uh, as far as which items to highlight, it depends on uh, uh, what area might be your priorities. If, if somebody's uh, uh, into medical packaging, then alignment is especially critical. So we've got you know, uh, uh, vast options for uh, aligning the two halves of an injection mold. Uh, also plate sequencing devices. Uh, uh, we're uh, for complex packaging uh, and medical tools. Uh, that's uh, our background is that. You know, we're from the Chicago area, which is a a, a corridor in medical and packaging uh, companies. So uh, that's just our roots and that's where a lot of our components are. But that said, uh, I'm surprised that one of our largest areas for growth have just been uh, 
long ejector sleeves, 50 inch long uh -huh. ejector pins, big support pillars, great big alignment locks. So, so we find ourselves um, you know, playing in the uh, uh, appliance market, the automotive okay. market. Uh, it wasn't our initial target, but I think just because of the type of tolerances that we're used to holding in the medical and the packaging world, um, that's that welcomed sense. by those who are building you know, precise tooling for some of those larger applications. So, but from a product standpoint, it's, it's like we're working down a long uh, honeydew list where every time we cross off you know, four things and then we come out to a show with those four things, in the meantime, uh, eight things have gotten on the list. You know? So we're always, um, we're always developing, we're never going to be done. Well, you know what's good about you too? You're always out there, so you're always hearing customers' pain points and you're trying to solve them with solutions, yeah. right? So you're constantly developing solutions to solve problems. Right, and, and, and sometimes people uh, give you the answers to the test. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll, they'll say, you know what we wish you guys had? Boom, you know, it's just like, great, we'll yeah. add that. Or you just have to kind of read between the tea leaves, you know, where uh, this customer will uh, wonder about a particular, you know, uh, solution, and then you can kind of hopefully, you know, huh. piece it together, and then come out with a product that, you know, solves the different things that you're hearing and such. Yeah, so we're not so just one things, customer, a bunch just, of customers. Right, right, right. So, so uh, it's just you know trying to get a lay of the land from from talking to customers. And what's it. nice is that uh, molds, people who run molds or uh, design molds are problem solvers. So you know you can have a very fruitful conversation of by saying. You know, what are some things that are causing unscheduled mold stoppages? Yep, and what are some things that, uh, from the molder's standpoint, from the mold maker's standpoint, asking, what are some things that you just, you know, it's not your profit center to have somebody make one for mm -hmm. a mold or to make three for a mold. And what are some things that you wish you could just select a small, medium, or large size, plop in the CAD geometry, and then get on with your business? With so, so, either way, uh, being with customers is uh, where the answers to the test are. So. Got it. How about mold monitoring? So that's a, that's a big thing. That, that wraps around the whole data trend too. It's all about data and tracking. So talk about the profile asset management system and how it monitors uh, what pro mold productivity and it makes it easier to access the mold's data, correct? Is it all right if I back up? Yeah, back so, up. Okay. <laughs> so I back up. Because, yeah, no, to, to, on the whole monitoring side of things, um, we, we realized uh, uh, a million years ago when dinosaurs roamed the earth, um, I was calling on this one particular molder who was describing to me that it used to be that uh, maintenance used to be done on a calendar type basis because the molds might as well have just been welded to the press. So you'd go up to the mold once a month and perform the following function, you know? But then that molder, this was about 30 years ago, uh, that molder pointed out to me, now with just-in-time manufacturing, molds are going in and out of the press so much, uh, and he, he pointed to uh, a shelf of molds. He said, I can't even tell you how many cycles are on any of these molds. So I started thinking of like, you know, the industry needs an odometer of which to perform maintenance. You know, so that's where that came from in like 1994 wow, or something, wow. right? Um, and those mold counters became, you know, uh, a, a popular product worldwide. Uh, then in 2010, we introduced a mold monitor that goes in that same pocket. So it's an electronic counter, um, but it also, you can walk up to it, press one button, and know not only uh, how many shots are on the mold, but you can also use that to run that uh, PM uh, is due, uh, or you can see cycle times, et cetera. You can learn a lot from that mold. So then uh, 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 a missing piece in that was, uh, uh, on the uh, asset tracking and the asset monitoring where not every uh, mold, uh, uh, you might have small prototypes, uh, not every mold lends itself towards an on-mold monitor. So how else can you track the maintenance for that asset? And, then it's, and that's where uh, Profile is uh, an asset tracking management program that can uh, either be a QR code on a mold that will then bring you to uh, a space where you're able to file mold information, part drawings, uh, mold drawings, uh, disassembly and assembly instructions for complex tools. So it's a storage place for information on molds. Uh, but then also, uh, we've adapted it so that then you could also use Profile. It's like a Facebook for, uh, for molds. Okay. You could also use <laughs> like Profile that. 
for uh, the maintenance of mold, uh, molding machines. You can mm. do end of arm tooling, oh, uh, wow. any fixtures, any die cast dies, trim dies. So it's, it's uh, not so generic like we are using uh, an off the shelf uh, generic general program. It's something that the progressive team put together for monitoring injection molds, die cast yeah. dies, stamping dies, machines. So that's, and, and you can either access that information with a QR code uh, a tag that goes on a mold, uh, or you can access it just with uh, on our mechanical counters for a million years. Okay. We've had laser etched on each mechanical counter uh, a URL serial number. So you can walk up to a, a mold with a mechanical counter and enter in a serial number. And if you have the rights, uh, you can uh, access the information on that injection mold. So uh, it's, it's real affordable. Hmm. Um, it's, it's like for somebody who wants to get into the game, we let them start for free. We let them go okay. with you know, 50 assets uh, and then manage them using profile. Uh, and then it's real inexpensive uh, for additional assets. Oh, nice. Because storage now is cheap. To, to, it's, it's, it makes no sense to charge a king's ransom for uh, storage online for information. So we do it where you can buy a, a, a mold tag for like 28 bucks and you can have uh, information on that mold stored you know, for the life of that program. So we're all about, and it's all what ties together the uh, components of ours and uh, that monitoring aspect, it's all about preventing unscheduled mold stoppages. Yeah. That's that's kind of a common enemy for mold makers and molders. Oh, that's the that is what do you call that? That's the bridge between those two worlds. Right, and the if, maintenance and if, side. And if things. a mold is down, and the it, it's kind of like a, a car on the side of the highway with a hood up, you know, uh, that's bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, somebody's somebody's got a world of heat, you yep. know. Uh, burning down their neck. Exactly. So uh, anything we can do from the component side of things, or from the monitoring side to prevent unscheduled mold stoppages, you know that's that's our that's our job. So. That's your mission. That's good. Well, thank you Guilty for that. Guilty as charged. I love it. So before I let you go, what else is going on? We have our T-shirts with our hashtag. You always do the shirts. Yeah. Well, this is a special one. Hashtag nice. molds make a difference. So I'm asking you, Glenn to fill in the blank. Hashtag molds make? Opportunity. Uh, I think of two things. One, uh, a, a mold is going to make the opportunity of a new product on the market. So for an injection mold, there's a lot of hopes and dreams and money on the line, you know? Uh, but then also, as your viewers know, uh, uh, there's so much opportunity within the industry. Uh, just with a foundation in the mold biz, one can go 111 different directions with their careers, uh, whatever suits their you know personality. So, so yeah, I think this this industry is all about opportunity. Perfect. So there you have it. Molds make opportunity, says Glenn Starkey from Progressive. Components. So that's that. So that's that. And for everything mold making, visit moldmakingtechnology.com. Very good. Thanks.